Oh, don't worry about it. Okay, we're on. And... <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Dice Towers. Live Halloween boring unboxing. Okay, we're on. <laughs> All right. This is pretty hot. All right, folks. For those of you who have never seen one of these before, this is the time of the month when we open up a pile of games, huge pile of games this time. Some of these games may be fantastic, some of them may not be. We just need to get them open and moved out because into our section over here, we have definitely moved in a ton. Wow, I'm hearing myself speak through. Uh, we are hearing ourselves move a, uh, move a ton of games in, so we need to move some out. All right, here we go. First, we have here Can you hear me now? All right. So, just as a reminder for the DuckTales Shake a Tail game, I just said that I'm gonna play this with my kids and we're probably not gonna be playing this one live and it looks horrific. You are sh literally shaking your butt and trying to get balls to come out. <laughs> All right, how to rob a bank. Now, I've actually uh, played How to Rob a Bank and reviewed it, the small version from, I think, Big G Creative. This is the jumbo version. All right. Let's take a look here. I feel like I should have a uh, little stand here. Maybe there. There we go. That's a nice. Okay. Anyway, How to Rob a Bank, rules, strategy game. Yeah, looks just like the other one. Just everything is bigger. Okay, cool. I like how to rob a bank. This is a good one. Next one. Here we go. Meeple Circus Expansion. I, this one is actually surprising to me that I have taken so long to get this to the table. Uh, why is there a camel sticker, but no camel, a seal, and a tiger sticker? Oh, those are for the original game ones, I guess. So they have stickers now for them. And some new cards and some new performances. Not really much in this. Uh, I met the designer of Meeple Circus at uh, Essen. That was pretty cool. All right, just a few new rules, some more advanced stuff. This will probably be pretty easy. Uh, for those of you asking for me to... Uh, open a specific game. No, that's not how this works. We're opening games that need to move on. There's a lot of really cool games that are sitting over there on the shelf. You will see unboxing them as time goes by. Every game gets unboxed on our channel at some point or other. Cake Duel. Uh, this one looks pretty interesting. I like cake. You know what else I like? I like candy. Song stuck in my head. I was listening to it today. It was on a Halloween playlist. Woo! Okay. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. That's pretty neat. And then we got some. This is. This is pretty. And all right, you gotta admit this is some. Some really nice 
production values here. Well, I like this a lot. Well, I mean, how it looks anyway. That's neat. All right. Huh. I'm actually not sure where, where the rules came from. Did they come from in here and then they just got smushed? Or were they just sitting here? Oh, they were sitting here. Neat. All right, that's going in the pile of... That's pretty good. Three games going home. All right, let's see. This one here. Kuan. This one's in Japanese, and I fear that it is... There's no English rules for it. My fears are correct, but it does have a big yellow mat. And let's see what's in here. Woo! Well, those are some pretty, pretty nice pieces. It'd be nice to get, I have to find the rules for this one because the pieces look great. All right, well, that's cool. You heard it here first. Tom Basil says, Cake Duel has better production than Scythe. I don't believe I said that. <laughs> but it is a very nice production. Uh, very, very impressive. And I'm sorry it took me this long to open it. All right. So let's get this in here. This is going to be where we run into problems trying to fit all this stuff in there. Get in there. Come on. Maybe that's good enough. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ah! Good enough. All right. Next! Heroes Crossing, which sounds like Animal Crossing. Oh, actually is another. This is one that has that whole pixel art stuff. Because, and this bugs me about this, right? This bugs me because there's no pixel art in here. So why does, is there pixel art? Okay, whatever. All right, that's pretty cool. That's cool. Here we go, pixel art. Uh, solo play rules. Woof. There's a lot of tiles in this game, that's for sure, though. I guess if you want to make a Legends of Zelda-style world. Armor shop, weaponsmithy. Oh, I know this game. This is the one where you basically have a, a town, and then heroes come to your town, and you need to sell them stuff. I like the idea of this one a lot, so maybe this one will get played. This is definitely on the strong maybe pile list. Okay, that's cool. Just that pixel art doesn't really do anything. Here's room 25, VIP. This makes no sense thematically. Why would a VIP be in the cube? Just some more rooms, some more rules in many, many, many languages. Wow. Had some things to cut out. OK. Help the VIP to escape the complex safely. No, I'm trying to get out myself. I'm not helping no VIP. Noir Automata. This is a world from Penny Arcade and is another version of Noir. This is a very excellent two-player game. They are a little, they're love lettering it, which means they've done like 10 different versions of it now. Lots of different game versions. Let's look at the art for this. Yeah, it's definitely Penny Arcade art. Okay. Let's take a look at some of the people. Albert, Betty, Carl, Dale, Edgar, Florina, Gloria, Hulahan, Isaac, Jimmy, Kirby, Lester, Malone. All right, that's interesting. Wait, there's more. Let's do the whole alphabet. We're gonna Kind of whop my knuckle there. Nixie. Oh, Cam, Pearl, Rita, Sam, Theo, Ursula, Verna, Whitman. This guy's just called X. Yolanda. And <coughs> Zeke. Excuse me. Huh. 
I've never actually read this series. Maybe I'll get around to it. Woof. All right, moving on. Robotech Ace Pilot. Let's see what's in here. Oh, wait, there we go. All right, so, whoa. Okay, that's interesting. They got all these tiles in here, like stacked rubber bands. Do you play in this box? Well, this game looks a lot lighter than I had anticipated. Huh. Wait, you're rolling dice? Where are these dice? Oh! Wait a minute. Dice. We just found a little bag of dice and we didn't know where they went. These look like them. Yeah. Well, that was a stroke of luck. Wonder why they weren't in the box. Well, sometimes that happens though. A publisher will publish something. I'll put that over there so I don't forget. T-Dragon Society. Apparently there are two versions of this game, both from Renegade. Let's see how these look. Looks the same. I'm guessing it's just a white box. That's the difference. Alrighty. It's interesting. I, 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 I did play the uh, Dinosaur Tea Party, but never played Tea Dragon Society. I think it's weird. I'm not sure why we have a box of each version. I think, is there just... I'm actually not sure what the difference of these are. No. Well, there you go. Alright. All right, all right, all right, internet, let's play a game here. We'll play Word Around. I already know how to play this Word Around 2. All right, so if you don't know how to play Word Around, you put a, we're gonna put one of these down like this, and then we'll do a sample one here, okay? And then you turn the card over. Well, I thought you turned the card over. Maybe Word Around 2 is played different. Uh, oh yeah, okay, okay, never mind. So first we gotta shuffle these cards. Which by the way is super fun to shuffle cards that are round. Those look like birthday cake cards somehow. All right, it's not a perfect shuffle, but that's good enough for what we're trying to do. All right, so we take a card here, and we flip this over, and it shows black, and you need to find the word here that's black. So this is, um, is it clink? That can't be right. Linic. Isnickly. Is clinic, oh, clinic. Never mind, clinic. So clinic is the word. All right, so that wasn't very good of me. So now you can race me. There's no way for me to tell if you've won because of the 30 second delay, but you can see yourself, ready? So whatever color this is, that's where you have to find. Go. Um, I'm not very good at this one. Oh my goodness. Resact? But that's not a word. 
sack dress. Actress! I am so dumb. All right, let's try it again. Black. Cover. Woo! Okay, here we go. Black. Except. Blue. Paradox. Red. Remember. Black. Ah, why can't I? Aware? No, it's a rar, 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 Why is my mind not doing this one right? Ears. Rear. Oh, you eraser. Yes. All right. No, that can't be right, is it? Eraser. Eraser. Well, which way is it supposed to go? Does it matter? Maybe it can go either way. Oh, I see. It can go either way. I was thinking only clockwise. All right, cool. Well, there you go. I will concede. I mean, because the thing is, sometimes it pops right out at you, and sometimes it doesn't. It's a pretty neat. It's a pretty neat concept. It's a fun thing. So, we'll take that one home. No, I won't. actually, I'll move that over there. All right, hacker. Cybersecurity logic game. It's from Think Fun. So. Interesting. It's kind of an interesting book here. We got code it, hack it, fix it. Wow, there's a lot of challenges in here. I don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. Here's a challenge booklet. I think I was just looking at the answers maybe. Are these the answers? Yeah, solutions. Oops, sorry. So you have a platform here. Well, that's interesting. So, I can move that. Ooh, now that is a fascinating device. Wow, I like that. That's neat. I don't know anything else about the game, but that's kind of a neat to set up. So, take it away. Cool, all right. Well, I like think fun stuff, so I'm sure this one is fun. That's Hacker. Cat Venture card game. The purr balls are on a cat venture. This saddens me already. This nonsense of a name. Okay, we got some gems, some dice, some some cards. You can be the prince, a mage, a soldier, a merchant, rogue, cleric, beastmaster, engineer, archer, ninja, assassin, trickster, thief. And then I guess all the bad guy stuff is in this one. Because I see a level three monster in the misty woods. You know what? The good news is, folks, is that we have truly yet to find a very bad game. When we have a bad game, we will emphasize that. What kind of monsters would I run into? Ooh, Cerberus? Forest Troll? Fiend? Oh, all right. I don't think I want to run in any of those guys, especially when I'm half a cat. Of course, maybe maybe the bad guys are the heroes, and they're stopping the land from evil cats. I feel like that's a stretch even for me. All right. Wow. Oops. This is a game of agility, observation, and memory. Players battle each other by quickly declaring the correct words to claim points. I don't even know what that means. Sounds like Dice Tower Tonight material. Yeah, I guess you're right. 
they start tonight is tonight so if you're watching and you want to come watch us do this sort of thing live all sorts of things come tonight well this looks like you are looking for the same thing on each card that guy's on each card if that's the case now that's something to do with dice all right Uh, you got to say an actual word? Dum dum, uoki, hamster ah, rockwa, oops. Okay. Uh, you know, I'll figure that out later. That one doesn't look too hot. Container's okay, I guess. If you're going to make a tin, you might as well make it a really sturdy octagon one. Well, I don't. I don't know if, how much of this next one I'm allowed to show. All right, this is Werewolf Legacy. Like, I think you can see some of the stuff in here, but you don't want to be spoiled. It comes with a big diary. The diary is really nice. Um, Yeah, I'm very eager to give this one a shot. This one hasn't hit the table yet because it's really hard to get a Werewolf Legacy game played. I'll do my best. Family Trade. This one is from China. Uh, paperboard. Paper cards. Paper money, plastic chips. Please tell me there's an English rule book around. Well, it looks like it's from Japan. These money have, oh, hard to read dice. Uh, this is a bad one. This is a bad one. Dice Tower thumbs down. Oh, the money doesn't even fit in. Prop. Bad. Kaleidoscope puzzle. Let's see how that one looks. This is another Think Fun one. This one looks beautiful. I'm really kind of surprised that this one, I must just not have seen this on the shelf because I would have probably pulled this out because these look, oh, okay. So look at that. That looks pretty. I don't know what this means, though. So it's a color mixing deduction game. So here's some more of these kaleidoscope things, these colors. All right, let's take a look here. Six tiles, and you need to match the pattern on the card. And then once you see if you get the correct pattern, you will hold it up to the... Oh, I can't show you this, unfortunately, but... I mean, you hold it up to the light and then you can see through here, like I see I have a yellow, a red, a purple, a green, a blue. If I do this, oh, neat. Okay, 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 okay. So challenge, okay, the, I'm looking at the back. Why do you show the solutions before you show the... All right, so we look here, and I just need to make it look like that. All red, so there's, there's yellow on that one. I don't want yellow, I just want blue. So I just want red and blue. 
So I'm assuming it's like that because there's two reds and then the blues are on top of each other. Looks good to me. Let's see if I'm right. What? I am. That was the easiest one. All right, all right, that's kind of cool. I like that a lot. Um, it's a really pretty puzzle. I don't know if there's anything super unique. You're just basically taking these cards, flipping them over, and putting them on top of each other. But, oh, yeah, someone said use your phone flashlight. That's a good idea. We'll just put a couple together here. This is harder than I thought. <laughs> All right. Turn the flashlight off. Cool. I do like that one, though. That is Kaleidoscope Puzzle. We'll look at that one later. Here's Raw Qual Wiz. I'm not gonna open that one because I'm sure it's like the other one. Final boss to come. Wait, where'd these chips come from? Oh, they're from that stupid game. Get out of my sight. Final boss, the card game. It's the final boss, the card game. Do 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 do. All right, inside we have rules and coins and gems and a whole mass of cards, which are shrink wrapped so tight they're bending the cards. Cosplay Kiddo, Crafty Lara, Jumpy Plumber, Aurora Blast, Trick Silverjoy, McPack, Mighty Pirate, Green Hero, Ancient Priest. Okay. Single Dragon? How can I be Single Dragon when there's two guys in the picture? You're not even like doing a good parody. This guy is God Killer. Speedy the Porcupine. All right. Yay, it's a parody. Am I the only person who thinks that parodies... I mean, parodies are funny once in a while, but... I don't know, they just seem, it seems like low hanging fruit, right? Just make an excellent game. We got enough parody games that exist out there already. Okay, that's a pretty abomination. Dark mirror, creepy creeps, space demon, horde of lemmings. <laughs> okay, that one I like. Oh, I haven't played lemmings in ages. I wonder if it's out for the iPad. Ah, oh, this looks like a take that game. Boo! I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but I hope I am. Let's see what the rules say. All right. Play a card from your hand. Combat cards, playing the combat card. Hmm, <laughs> Enemies spawn, you will fight them, stack combat effects. Well, maybe it's not a take that game, but it looks like one. Also, it's in a tin. This one is going on this side. Poetry slam, baby! Oh, Captain, my Captain. Two roads diverged in the yellow wood, and sorry I was I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood, and I don't remember any other part of it. Well, this looks kind of cool. There's little shields inside it. There's some slam tokens. Comes with a bunch of sharpened pencils. That's kind of cool. And then a bunch of this stuff. Some letters. These look like they're all the same. And then a whole, is this a score sheet? Yep. 
Not bad packaging. Mayday Games did a good job. Well, these are kind of silly tiddlywinks, but a bunch of tokens that look like dice. All right. I have not played Poetry Slam yet. I probably should get around to it. Do you have to do poetry in it? Yeah, it looks like a word game. Well, all right. Poetry Slam. That's not lemonade. In this game, I believe you are pressing your luck and you're drinking lemonade and hoping against hope that that's what you are drinking. The game comes with little cups. Nice artwork. This is from the same guys who made uh, Two Rooms and a Boom. I feel like this should be openable. There it is. Not a lot of cards in this one. All right, so I got lemon, lemon, lemon. Lemon, 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 lemon. That's not lemonade. But what is it then? There's not a lot of pieces in this game. There's just some cups and some cards. Ah, seems like a simple game to play. This game is a ball. Wrong, wrong, launch. Wait a minute, it's that same thing. The ball is bursting out. I summon you, Pikachu! Well, actually, that kind of looks cool. That's some pretty neat gems in there. Some more of these dice and some more of these cards. Bow the box. This looks like it's the same, like, uh, is there a dartboard? Sure. This looks like a little Euro game almost. Players will throw a die on the dart card, score based points, and the die will show the multiplier. All right. Come on now. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Come on now. There we go. Three times four, 12. Seven times three, 21. Five times six, 30. Come on. Four times six, 24. One times four, four. That's not a very good roll. One times 10. Are you kidding me? All right, someone mentions here in chat, how am I supposed to short store this? That's a good question. <laughs> On a very flat shelf, someone says, or a baseball display stand. Well, let's see, once we put, oh, die, get in there. It doesn't actually roll, it's, it, there's a, it's a flat bottom here. So it's not quite a sphere, so it will sit there. But if it gets knocked over, that's eh, still not too bad. All right, got to give it props for that. I thought it would fall over a whole lot easier. All right. Let's take a look at some kid style games. This one is Hackathon, Keep Talking to Decode. This looks like a Keep Talking and the Bomb Will Explode. What do you see? Ask the advisor for instructions. Work together to solve the puzzle. That is what this one is. Huh, I'm going to have to play this one with the kids, I think. Oh, batteries included. What? What kind of witchery is that? Ah, sorry. So twist. Oh, that's cool. 
It's not those twisty ties. Those things that, you know, my kids would get dolls. They put these dolls on these twisty things. The people who make those hate humans. Well, I'm not going to be able to do this one because it needs a screwdriver, and I don't have a screwdriver sitting around. Okay, you can spin this spinner here. Press these buttons. All right, cool. Of course, here's the negative thing about this, right? The negative thing about this is, here's the game. What am I, this box is not a good box to keep it in. How am I, why do, why do companies, I know it's because they make their cheap. That's a stupid box. All right. <laughs> Chow crown. So look at this one here. <laughs> Okay, so apparently, okay, that's the, the art. This is what the actual game looks like. You're supposed to put food on this thing. It will spin around, and you got to grab it. That is hilariously awful. I'll play it with my kids. All right. Actually, we should probably put it on our heads, right? I mean, in the interest of science, it's foolish of me to not do that. And I apologize for considering not. Chow Crown. Ah, oh, I just was talking about these things. Okay, these are different. These are ones you have. Yes, folks, I'm trying not to cut my fingers. Does it not stretch at all? Or does this part come down? Oh, that's the chin strap. <laughs> well, I have always wanted to look like this. All right. Got it. So where do these go then? These look like they go on in here. <laughs> oh, I forgot the crown part. <laughs> All right, mass market stupidity for the win because your kids are too dumb to handle anything interesting. And yet I'll still probably give it a whirl. I don't think this one's gonna end well. I don't think this one's a pie face. That's a bad game. Bad, bad, bad. Historic Kazuna and La Ciola Cruciato. Take a closer look here. Hey, remember those dice we're missing? I think they go in that game. 
You can check them if see that robo, that robo run. You can check and see. Hey, all the counters for this one come punched out, so there's that. Uh, oh my goodness. All right. It's like a puzzle piece board. So that's kind of cool. All right. Well, this is one of those games where they have English on all the cards, but it is really, really, really tiny. However, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. There is English rules in this game. It seems pretty s small and simple. A turn event phase. There's a bunch of characters in the game. Scenario cards, a bunch of tokens. All right. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Let's continue with these giant kid games. This one is Pie Face Cannon. You shoot it out of the cannon whipped cream and then the other kid has to block it. Yeah, all right. Hydro Strike. Win or get wet. Well, that's interesting. Holly! I'm not sure why. Oh. We got to try this game out on camera. All right, so. Uh, where's the instructions? Did I just take them out? There they are. Here, let's grab, grab them real quick. All right, Hydro Strike. Well, this part's fun without the water. Well, hang on, let me figure out how to get the rest of this in. Okay, hydro instruction. Remove the caps covering the water tanks and carefully pour water into each tank covering. So the water tanks, oh, this is, a, okay, here's the water tank. All right, so pour some water in there and then close that up and the same thing over here. So I'll take the ball. All right, so the, oh, here's the coverings. So each player will press the pressure button next to your score tracker, put a ball, allow it to fall on the game board, and we will release it. We'll put our hands and squeeze them back to operate the flippers on the game board. When the ball touches the flippers, the player on that side should quickly squeeze the hand grips to send the, uh, the ball down the alley towards his or her opponent's target. If it hits a target, it activates the mist and sprays the player on that side of the game board. Does this require batteries? No? Okay. The player who hits the target scores one point and moves his or her score tracker one space. Huh. All right. To reset the game, press the pressure buttons on the end of both game boards. When it says pressure, is that like just a pumping up thing? All right, come on. Let's try this, this sucker. All right, all right, so is this the pressure button? Go ahead and press yours. Press, no, press your pressure button there. All right, here we go. Oh, no, I was supposed to do this. Is anything happening? <laughs> Sorry. 
I mean, um, all right, so we now know how it works. All right, let's try it again. You have to like, you have to like hit it in the thing. Here, I'll, I'll hit mine just to test it. All right, all right. All right, here we go. That was a very weak hit. Did I get you? Did I get you? How do you have to hit these things to get them in? Yeah! Boom! Repressurize. Come on now. Don't be cheating. Oh, that's twice in a row! This is the greatest game ever. Repressurize. Ah, oh, three hits. You're out. All right, here we go. Empty out the water and whatever. That was weirdness. Hydra Strike. Okay, where are we? All right, here we go. Let's do a bunch of Nestor games. So first we got this one here. Ooh, it's Terraforming Mars. This is Gardens of Mars. All right, this has some cool looking aliens and a bunch of discs and some dice please roll the board with the picture on the outside says the thing all right that's kind of cool all she's going to come back with a cup of water to dump on your head no my daughters are very nice they would never do such a thing All right. Thanks. You want to play again? I know. These are boring games. All right. Well, maybe these aren't. Wow, that's a lot of stuff here for top speed. Okay, this is one time, Miss, Mr. Nestor, that I would have just said, put the game in a box. Holy moly. All right, so there's the track. Here's the cards. And then there are seven decks of cards here. Yeah, I like Nestor's games and I like, you know, his do-it-yourself type machinery, but cards are not one of them. Yeah, I'm not very interested in this one actually because of this. And I don't like the packaging. I don't mind the packaging. The pencil case type thing for, oh my goodness, for a, uh, oh, there's eight decks of cards. I missed one in here. So three, four, five. But yeah, this is just too much to put into one pencil case thing, right? That's half the pencil case right there, there one, and then they're attached together. All right. Well, that was a lot of work for that one. Last one here. This is an, a smaller one. This one is Mad Gap. Well, I kind of like this board. An explosive game. Has some barrels and some dice. And some gold nuggets, like Seriously, fool's gold nuggets. Look at these. Those are actually, that's pretty neat. All right, well, that's cool. So how does this game work? You're, uh, you're just gonna see how high up the thing you can go, roll the dice, choose a die, move that barrel up or down, 
and you're trying to unload the dynamite safely. All right, that's interesting. That might be a fun, a fun little game. Because it's thrilling, really. All right. Bam, 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 bam. All right, this one is the Monster Match Game. This one is from Happy Planet. They're the North Star guys. They made Happy Salmon. So let's see here. We got some. Silly monster cards here. This looks like a game my kids would like. All right, so we'll take that. Oh, there's some dice in here. Four arms. Oh, okay. That looks like that's the kind of game it is then. Neat. And then, who did it? Was it the rabbit? The gerbil. I better see a human being in here. The cat. The parrot. The fish. I think we would know if the fish did it. The turtle. Oh. Well, that's not as interesting. Again, if you are trying to figure out which of your animals did it between a parrot, a fish, and a turtle, you're going to have problems. Uh... Got it, okay, it's a speed style game. All right, well, my kids might like it, and if not, this, uh, this particular game case has been all over the studio, left on people's desks with the who did it theming. All right, well folks, we're getting somewhere. We are more than halfway done today. Some of you are like, when are you gonna get to the good games? When indeed! You haven't watched one of these before, have you? The thing is, some of these games might be good. Now, you saw that one, that, that, that cake one or whatever. That looked really good. Just That's the way a cookie crumbles or a cake crumbles. This one is Liar's Dice. This is a specific version of it. I know that. Huh. Well, I can't argue with this. Wow, these are good dice. I have four twos. Do you believe me or not? What do you think? While you're debating, we'll see how many times you can read me to see if I'm lying or not. These red dice look great. So I said there was four twos in here, in the orange one. In the red one, I'm saying there are four threes. That's some pretty luck. Pretty good luck. All right, blue. Oh, blue is already open. Here I have two threes. Four twos, four threes, two threes. I'm really liking these dice. This is a very nice looking game. A nice version. Too bad it's only for four players, so that's a disappointing. Three twos. Four twos. Four threes. Two threes. Three twos. Which one am I lying on? Or am I lying on two of them or three of them or all of them? No to all, says one person. All right, let's find out. Are you ready? Four twos, look at that, woo! Only two threes, a liar! Two threes, I said that, the truth! Three twos, truth, lie, truth, truth! Bomp, 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 bomp. These are great though. These are great storage components and stuff. I really like that. There are some changes I think to the game maybe. The rules are here in the thing. 
This is not a bad little uh, setup. I, you know what I would like? The only thing without this one is there's no mat. And I like having the mat that you place the pieces on. Nah, that's unfortunate. That's fluff. She booya, she booya, she booya. The girl is hard to get. All right, some red and blue cubes, and then some squares, and no English rules. All right, well, that's cool. The strongest bully. That was always my goal. Also, it doesn't look, oh, nope, there is English rules for this one. All right, what's the background to this game? You're a 10-year-old bully. However, there are other boys in town you have not met. You have to fight them and gradually become the strongest bully. The purpose of this game is to get the highest score by taking toys, point cards, from the other bullies. Give me your car. One through six. Give me your broken robot. Give me your catcher's mitt. Give me your kite. Give me your house. Your top. <gasps> I'm telling mom, I'm telling dad. These are really good quality cards though. They really are. Um, so I'm assuming this is some sort of like trick taking game, right? Or something. Uh, pick a card and put it face up. Everyone else puts one face down. We turn them over. Whoever did the highest priority card becomes the strongest bully's best friend. The leader will identify his best friend by saying, hey, you're my best friend. <laughs> yeah. If no, I love these rules. If no one satisfies the conditions to become the strongest bully's best friend, the game enters an insolence state. This situation will be explained later. You know, I will not have any more of this insolence. I've never read that a game before. An insolence state. Oh, this is great. This is great. The game enters an insolent state during the card bragging step of the friendship phase if all children are issued a point card with a different color and different number from the leader's point card. Or a point card of the same color as of that leader's card but with a higher number. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I love it. Also, it was held together with a hairband. Can't complain about that. All right, mini diversity or diversity. No, it's actually, I think, diversity. Now, they showed this to me when at Gen Con, and we need to get this one played. I heard this one's good. It's a little cooperative game. I think Z Garcia is interested in this one. So, yes, not everything here is in the dregs, as someone said. These are the dregs that have been on the shelf for some time. Maybe. What this means, when you see them here, it means they've been on the shelf for three or four months. Usually four months, but in this case, we decided to get rid of the uh, three-month ones because Essen. So you can see there's different cards here with different symbols. They went over this a little bit to me. You're going to be making a line here and trying to have good things happen. So, yeah, this one, this one sounded good when they explained it to me. So it just hasn't got played yet, that's all. It's easy for small games to get overlooked, too, probably. Versus Thor versus Loki. Yeah, whatever. News at 11. Sorry, I'm just not interested in verses, so I don't really care about that set. Some of you are probably like, whoo. Insolent State needs to be the name of a game? That would be interesting. All right, News at 11. That is a lot of wasted space there, my friend. Sports ball. All right, how to play. You're going to make up topics. News 11 is three rounds with some quick interactive setup before the game begins. Each round, we're going to, okay. Pick a lead anchor. The most outgoing. Well, that wouldn't be me, but I'll take it for now. All right, all right, all right. In order, pick one blank space in each card and call it the category. Listen to the blank. Don't write yet. Shout out suggestions, and you write one in permanent marker forever. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, you're just going to be talking about these things. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little thrown off. I, I, I mean, I'm all for legacy games, I, I guess, but literally, you're writing down stuff in permanent marker? What? Why? Why would you? What? That's not a legacy game. That's just. It's insubordinate nonsense, is what that is. All right. News at 11. Yay. All right. That gets a mask. <laughs> All righty. Welcome to the Dice Tower. <laughs> it's time for dude. There we go. For people who like dude, dude appears in five different, six different ways. So you're supposed to say dude. This is like happy salmon, but with dude. So you're just supposed to say it in a specific way. So this one I think is just dude. Dude. Oh, no, never mind. There we go. Dude. Dude. I don't know. Is that the way? Dude. 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 <laughs> that is this game. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to. All righty. More dude. <laughs> now you got to do the same thing, except in like different voices, dude, dude. Dude. A dude. Dude. Awesome artwork for sure. The cards are actually pretty good quality. Oh my goodness. Talk about a dumb game that people are buying. Oh, so it's an overrated movie. All right, dude and more dude. Someone's asking, are there going to be any good cards, games in this? And the chance of that is very small. Well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I, again, there are some good games because we looked at some. Uh, this is a really small game called Fruit Friends. It's a little Japanese game here. I guess cute is the best word for this one. I'm not seeing any like English rules in here or any rules at all, actually. I guess we'll have to go online for them. But I like the, eh, it looks a like a little cute game. Fruit Friends. Are these oink games? They are oink games. All right. I have not played either of these. Zogen. There's like some. All right, so let's see how Zogen plays. Choose one set of colored cards. We're gonna play cards. Look at your 
card, try to find a card that matches the condition. The card has more, one more type of microbe of card in the middle. All right, looks like I end up a speed style game. All right. That's not necessarily bad. Oink games are like all over the place. Some of them are great, obviously. Some of the Oink games are some of my, you know, people's favorite games. Uh, Fake Artist Goes to New York is a really great game. We played a new game of Oinks at um, Essen. It was about gold nuggets or something. I don't know where that one is. We'll probably review it. It was okay. It wasn't great. It was okay. So that's Zogen. This one here, then, is Toma Toma Tomato. Has a bunch of tiles with parts of tomatoes on them and a gigantic die that is numbered from one to three. Tomato Tomato. Toma. Tomato Mato. That's it. Okay, so it's Tomato Mato. I don't know why they're so tied to this size box. It's like the tiny epic stuff. All right. These cards must be read like the Japanese pronunciation. Please pronounce. All right. Tomato. Ma. That means devil. Mato means target. To means door. Potato. <laughs> means potato. Got it. Interesting. I did not know that. You roll a die and then you turn over some cards and you have to read whatever it says. <laughs> okay, that's silly. Alright, so this is Ma. Alright, so, so, okay. So we have these cards. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Rolling the die. Here we go. Two cards. Ready? Tomato. See? That's to and mato. Two more cards. To tomato. Or to tomato. One card. Mato. Let's do three cards. Ma mato mat Ma mato to. <laughs> That's such a dumb game. Okay, that's just like uh, I mean, it, it's basically just a one-time thing, right? Oh, 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 oh! It's it's better than I thought. <laughs> All right. Okay, so hang on. So it works like this. We go one. All right. Ma. And the next person, we roll the die. Two. We add them here. Ma, tomato, ma. Hehe. <laughs> Two more. Ma, tomato, ma, 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 to, to. Hehehehe. <laughs> One more. Ma, tomato, ma, ma, to, to, ma. <laughs> ma, tomato, ma, ma, to, to, ma, ma, to. Three more. Ma tomato, ma mato, to ma mato, ma ma mato. I'm still in this. One. Ma tomato, ma mato, to ma mato, ma ma mato mato. Ma tomato, ma mato, to ma mato, ma ma mato, mato to. Ma tomato, ma mato, to ma mato, ma ma mato, mato to, tomato to. Where are the potatoes? I said there was the potatoes in there. I'm very disappointed. I'm putting, I'm putting one at the end just because. Let's just add a whole bunch here. Here we go. All right. Ma tomato, ma ma mato, to ma mato, ma ma mato, mato, to tomato, to potato, tomato, mato, mato, mato. Ha ha ha, that's so dumb. How do you lose? 
at any time, anyone, if, if someone said it wrong, everyone will grab a card that they want. Well, how long do you have to say it? Oh, you got to read it as quickly as possible. All right, let's try. I mean, ma tomato, ma ma to to, ma ma to ma 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 to, ma to to, tomato to, potato tomato, ma to ma to ma to. Someone just asked if I'm in the Black Lodge with Twin Peaks. Ma to ma to, red runs the river. It was the mash. It was the monster mash. The monster mash. It was an instant smash. The monster mash. That is tomato, mato. All right. Mystique, and not the person who changes things. This is from Nestor Games, a deck and game design. Again, I like Nestor games, but this is not a good, this is not good cover design at all. All right, it looks like a kind of a trick-taking game. Looks like it's one through five of different colors. Are these the same? No, of different suits. So there's different colors and different suits. Uh, all right, well that is Mystique. All right, here we got a mosquito game. Yeah, there's a mosquito on it, that's how I know. Someone said that I was just playing a Charlie Brown teacher speech generator. <laughs> All righty. Uh, I'm not seeing any English rules though. Oh, that's too bad. Maybe they're on the other side. Nope. I have no idea what this game's about, but there's mosquitoes, bats, and whatever that is. Okay. And some brown discs. That is the entirety of that game. Oh, it's called Mayfly. Not mosquitoes. Sorry. Mayfly. You think in Florida I would know what a mosquito looked like. All right. Two more small games, and then we'll get to, to some bigger ones. Jungle Race. This is from Cranio Creations. All right, let's see. You can drive a carrot, or you can drive whatever that is. That giraffe has some serious neck problems, and this guy is riding in a banana, which seems to be stereotypical that apes always want to drive in a banana car. But I have found that that is not necessarily true. I'm still standing. All right. Let's see. It looks like there's the racetrack. Oh, that's kind of some pretty, some pretty uh, backgrounds here. I like that a lot. Then each player has some race cars. Or maybe you're betting on the players? I don't know. Let's see. Jungle race. Three stages. Well, that's weird. How does this work? When it's your turn, play a card from your hand and push them forward and swap directions with the person behind you. That's interesting. Just a simple game where you play cards to move the racers, but that also affects your, if you want that one to win or not. Huh. All right, and then I think this is the last little Japanese game that we have today. So if that's why you're here, it's almost time for you to leave. All right, uh, once again, no English rules, unfortunately. Some little 
chibi people here. And that guy, otaku. And then some chips. That's it. Ah, okay. I don't know anything else about this game. This is very not interesting. I can't get the rules back in, but I bet if I magically put it over here, it will happen. All right. Death of the Party, also known as when the Eurogamer shows up. That was a joke. That was a joke, friends. All right. Um, so this game comes with badges and envelopes. And body. It looks like it's a murder mystery type thing, right? Okay. And then a bunch of cards. Okay. Lipstick. Use a side to answer a question. Handkerchief. Use a side to answer a question. Glasses. And there's numbers. Revolver. Use this side with a clue to commit murder. Are you... Oh my. Alrighty, my problem with this is it doesn't really look that interesting, the artwork. We got some people. Here's who you can be in this game. The killer or a party goer. You can be Jeevan Sly the butler, Lynn the server, Dan Diamond, Dirk Ruffley, Hemlock Jones, Jesse Kvetcher, John Ship. I don't really like the artwork on these. You know, I'll let you guys look at it a little. Yeah, it looks okay. Right? Meh. Meh. Ah. I, the idea is interesting, right? Like, a, you know, one of these games in a box, but I don't know. This, this box isn't doing anything for me. All right, catch the moon. I didn't realize we had this game. I was messing with it the other day at Essen, actually. And this is a game from Bombix. And it's about stacking ladders. Really cool. Although I gotta be careful here as I open this because, so, well those ladders aren't gonna fit in there. Let's see if we can find some better ladders. These are not like the, the strongest of ladders. Here we go. No, no. Okay, maybe I'll find one that's the right size eventually. I think it's this one. No, 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 no. Okay, that's too thin. Must be this one then. Got it. I don't even know what I'm doing. Interesting. All right. Well, it looks fun. Here's some very straight ladders. Maybe these are the ones you start with. Let's see if these fit in. Oh, well, there you have it. <laughs> All right, let's put that. There we go. Now let's get some stuff in these. Yeah. 
This is cool. I like this. It has kind of an art. I don't even know if I'm following the rules. I'm just building stuff right now. But it looks neat as you put these ladders on. Yeah, I'm going to take this one home and play with the kids. I think they'll enjoy this. That's pretty neat. All righty, cool. That's Catch the Moon. Magical Treehouse. I've actually played Magical Treehouse. Back when it was, I played the original before it was cool from AEG with their Big in Japan line. Have they reviewed the Alta Plano expansion yet? No! Didn't we like show it like off yesterday? How fast do you think we are? Um, again, there's like a gazillion games coming in. Yep, so in this one you're building like a big tree house. You're going to make cards. You have underground cards and stuff like that. And you're putting people in your tree house. It's an interesting game. I thought it was, you know, the components weren't nearly as good as they are now. So I'll have to try it again. It's been a long time since I played it as you make potions and stuff. But it's interesting. So that's Magical Treehouse from AEG. All right, the captain is dead, locked down. This one is based on that Captain is Dead series. Um, so it says, even without the hit of the captain, we were able to escape the alien attack in our last episode. That's right. Not me, but I mean, I'm sure someone did. And this one, I think you are now captured by aliens and you need to escape or something like that. That's kind of a cool board. I heard that the rule book for this one is one of the worst rule books ever written. I hope that's not true. A bunch of standees, a bunch of characters. So what character would you like to be in this one? Do they have the characters in here? Not in this stack. Unless they're on this side. Oh, yep, here they all are. So here's who you can be in this one. The crewman, tactical officer, telepath, counselor, diplomat, medical officer, cyborg, science officer, scholar, ensign, hologram, janitor. I always want to be the janitor. Teleport chief, chief engineer, hacker, first officer, admiral, synthesizer, weapons officer, and soldier. Well, you know the admiral's in charge. If the captain's gone, it just seems to make sense. All right. Yeah, I don't know about this one. Again, the, the negative buzz is really high on the whole rules are written poorly thing. I hope I'm incorrect on that. All right, so now we have Before There Were Stars. This is from uh, Smirk and Laughter, I believe. It has a companion app to it. Ooh. I do like these. Look at these pieces. They're pretty neat. They're like stars. Oh, I like those a lot. Oh, and the dice have star pips. Wow, these are great. You probably can't see the star pips, but that's a pretty neat thing. Some constellations, some bags. This doesn't look bad at all. It's Halo. Before there were stars, keywords and prompts. So you have to make a story out of this too? Oh, interesting. All right, cool. That's before there were stars. All right, I need to get around to buying an Alexa so I can play this game. That's not why I would buy an Alexa. I'd buy an Alexa because I've been tempted to get one. But this one needs an Alexa. That's definitely the case of it. So that's going to be very specifically not for everybody, right? There's part of the world. And here's the other half. You're going to put them together like a puzzle board. Got some blue and red pieces. And then the instructions and how to play. And some metal pieces. Looks like there's a thimble in here. It's the one I took out of Monopoly. A thimble. A ring. That's too small for my finger. A guitar pick, a button, and a key. 
Hmm. And if you use these and go to the right spot, you will unopen a, a contest to win one million dollars. Doppelganger. This is from WizKids. WizKids makes a lot of games, right? It's hard to keep up with how many games they make, and you're never quite sure if any game's good. This one's from Steve Avery and Robert Burke. I feel like I should have heard of this. Uh, if you're going on a quest, you're going to walk through and go through a party. We got some... Some cards here. There's some very generic fantasy artwork, frankly. Destroy the Rock Golem. Trick the Greedy Leprechaun. All right, well, Battle Dog. So it's like a quest. Dungeon Crawler? Doppelganger? I don't even know. What's the theming of this? Poison Staffs, Magic Staff. Let's read the back of the box, see what the theming on this one is. I'm telling you something isn't right. Wind the rogue, shut it, Tanlin, and keep your mind on the quest before us. No more talk of seeing a doppelganger. Hit and roll game, but some of them are doppelgangers. Hmm. That's not an awful idea, a dungeon party, and some people are doppelgangers, isn't it? Okay. School fairs. Oh, we do have another Japanese game, and it's another one without English instructions. But hey, you can look at all the pieces, and drinks, and food, and a board, and all kinds of cool stuff. At School Fair Cafe Club. I really need to get English instructions from these so we can play them. Voodoo! Hoo, hoo, hoo. All right. I believe everyone who went to Dice Tower Con got a copy of this. Or anyone who participated in the Jack Vassal Fund there got this one. It's from Red Glove Games in May Day. Uh, oh, it comes with its own little voodoo doll. How charming. But it is Halloween, so that would make sense. Some cards here. Some, some custom dice. All right. Those are score markers. You got to cast a curse card, and you have to do the actions on the cards. Yeah, I played this before. I know I did. The tower of elbows must always touch. I reviewed this way back in the day. If you like silly, silly dice games, you'll like it. Arrive. This game is dumb. <sighs> but it's heavy, like super heavy. I have no idea how this got published. I think everyone involved thought it was such a funny joke. But this game comes with this many, these are all mouse pad mats. No kidding. The lodge, the hospital. Each of these is a mouse pad mat. So if you need some spare mouse pad mats, this game is good for that, 100%. I mean, I'm skipping them at this point. I'm not even going through all of them. But in this game, this is essentially Cthulhu Twister. No joke. You're going to put these down here on the ground, and then you're going to be playing Twister, Cthulhu style. There must be some curses and other things going on. I don't want to play Twister. I don't know that I want to play a Cthulhu version of Twister. So, there you go. Well, this one people will be mad that I have even reviewed yet, but here you go. Hannibal, Rome vs. Carthage. Yes, I know this is a very highly rated game. I've actually played it. 15 years ago, I was at a convention and it was, I was there super early and some guys were playing it and they're like, hey, do you wanna play? And I was like, sure, what is it? 
Wow, this is really nice components though, that's for sure. Look at those miniatures. These are the leaders, I think, from the game. That's pretty cool. This is a pretty nice looking game. And then we got Hannibal and Hamel Carr. Oh, that's a lot of rules. All right. That's the scenario book. Okay. This is the playbook. All right. This is more stuff. Where's the board? All right. Here we go. Neat. Well, you can't deny that it looks cool. And I've I it's again it's hard for me to like make any kind of judgment call on a game I played that long ago, but I I'm sure people like it. I don't think it's my style, but like I said, I've heard nothing but good about this game, and these components are extremely nice to the point where I'm not actually sure how they all got in this box. Eh, I'll worry about that later. Three games? No, two games left. Evil High Priest. This is from Peterson Games. Bunch of wicked looking tokens. Some wicked looking uh, sheets. Some evil rooms, sanctums. A uh, scary looking board. Another scary looking board. That is two sided. This one's called Black Goat. You know, that's never any good. Another board. These are towns. Dunwich and Kingsport are on here? Well, there you go. I mean, uh, I guess Cthulhu's involved now. Oh, yep. Air Shuggoth. Well, that's a shocker. Cthulhu showed up. Shogoth. I don't know what this is. These are just some nasty looking creatures. No, nope, that's not many. Dimensional gate. Bunch of wooden pieces. Dice. It doesn't, there's something here in the bottom. Well, I don't know what this says. So, I'm just going to read it out loud. Padnagal Lu Maguana Fuana Kathulhu. Right, Anne? What? What? I should stop reading? Oh. Yeah, no, I don't want to doom humanity. Okay. Sorry, guys. I was told by our producers to not read this one. Evil High Priest. And the last game for this boring... Oh, no, there's two more. Uh, there's one over there. I'll have to get that one in a second. Hand of Fate. Forty Howlers. Whoa, that rule book was massive. Just like this board is. bunch of these boards. These cards are sleeved, which makes me think I was given a used copy. There's some miniatures in here. What am I looking at? What is what is this? Everything's sleeved. Stride, forge, hack, stride, hack. Is this a dungeon crawl? There's a bunch of tokens and stuff. Call lightning. Yeah, this looks like a dungeon crawl. Like a gothic dungeon crawl. Well, I guess some people like that sort of thing. Gothic, I think, is one of my least favorite settings, period. Well, that's Hand of Fate Ordeals. Let's see what it says in the back. Be seated, adventurer. The game that lies before you is no mere toy. It is an artifact of great and ancient power, 
I don't care, 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 I don't care. It's an adventure card game for one to four players, playable in competitive and cooperative game modes. Yeah, it's probably a lie. Alrighty. Last one for sure now, that brown one. It's from Nestor Games. He normally makes the really small games. You've seen them so far. This one looks like it had, this one's called Flink. Definitely 3D printed. You can tell by how the pieces look. Blue and white. All right. With kind of like this cool board to put things on. I don't know if I'm playing correctly or not, but it's kind of entertaining to put these pieces on. Oh, it looks like all the pieces are the same. I just realized they're all this exact same piece, which reminds me of other games like this genre. All right, cool. Well, that's Flink. All righty, one hour and 37 minutes of opening up games. And that's why it's fun to be a game reviewer. All righty, folks. That's that. Some of these games were fantastic looking. Some of them, most of them, were not. And so uh, I bid you adieu. I hope you all have a fantastic night. Have a great Halloween. <laughs> all righty. Well, I'm back to my roots here. Can't see anything, actually cameras there, right? Alrighty. Well, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching a live boring unboxing. And now I'm going to stop the video somehow. Hey, Kenny, I'm looking for Tom. Have you seen Tom? Kenny, have you seen Kenny? <gasps> ah! Ah! Ah!